Hello, I'm Wes Dyer. I'm a member of the RX team. Hi, and I'm Bart Smet. I'm also a member of the RX team. And today we're going to be doing the first in a series of videos um, covering the RX workshop. We've given this other places and we're now excited to offer this on, on the web. And uh, we're really excited about RX. We actually have it pro out as a product now. And as you know, this also includes like a new license, um, a support model for it. You can call and later on we'll be giving you challenges. If you have trouble, maybe you can call support and ask them for help. And uh, we'll have a lot of fun together. Today, this video is mostly about how to get started. And then the other videos will always end in a challenge. Um, and we hope that you, you open Visual Studio, hack on it with your friends, and have a good time. So it'll be really great. All right, so let's get started with Rx. So reactive programming, it sounds really intimidating, but you've actually been doing it for, for a long time. Anytime you have um, you know, events going on in your application and you, and you react to these events in your program, that's reactive programming. If you contrast this with like interactive programming, where the program drives the environment, um, this actually makes it so that you can have responsive applications when you write reactive programs. And they can respond to dynamically changing data in an environment. So what is reactive extensions? Why is it so great? Well, in fact, reactive extensions allow us to uh, glue together a whole bunch of different data sources. So for example here, we have like stock tickers and RSS feeds, you know, GPS devices and so on. And all these things produce data. And what Rx does is it stands in the middle. It's kind of like the glue that connects everything together and allows us to compose and bring together these, all these important event sources. So that unifies all of those. Exactly. So the same interface, right? That's right. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. So we have a unifying interface with um, Rx. So Rx is really three pieces. First of all, it's the interface that, uh, that Bart was talking about, and that is the way we represent asynchronous data streams. The second thing is that it's ability, the ability to query these asynchronous data streams. And the third is the ability to parameterize the concurrency because they're asynchronous data streams, and we parameterize it with schedulers. So Rx, if you remember one thing from today, I would remember Rx is observables and link and schedulers. And that's the, uh, the representing part, the query part, and the parameterizing concurrency part. So where can you get it? Well, if you have a phone, you already have it available on the ROM. It's also on MSDN Data Developer Center, and you can get it through NuGet. And uh, this is true of both, well, for two of those, MSDN Data, Devel Data Developer Center and NuGet, you can get both the stable and the experimental versions. And on Windows Phone 7, it has um, a version that shipped there as well. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look at how we install, you know, the reactive extensions. So basically, just go to, um, your favorite browser and your favorite search engine and search for reactive extensions. That will actually bring you to the MSDN Data Developer Center homepage where we actually have uh, the download of Rx available as well as links to the forums, the documentation, beginner's guide, hands-on labs, and those kind of things. So we'll actually get to reactive extensions first of all by installing the SDK. And the SDK is just an MSI installer that adds reference assemblies to Visual Studio. And so if you go here, you can actually download either the reactive extension stable release or the experimental release. And so we'll actually do our demos using the stable release and only depend on the things that we actually have stabilized for which we have documentation as well. So let's actually go ahead and install this. Just bring you to the download page where you can install the SDK. It's a single MSI, so it actually just takes a moment to install. And it will add, you know, the reference, um, reference assemblies to the dialogues in Visual Studio for any of the platforms that you care about. So we have .NET 3.5, .NET 4, Silverlight 4, and WP7. We also have in the experimental release support for Silverlight 5 coming up as well. So let's actually install this. And that will just take a little moment. And then we'll open up Visual Studio and take a look at the assemblies um, appearing in the Add Reference dialog. So here we go. Um, very fast install. Let's open up uh, Visual Studio. And let's take a look at where we can find Rx now. So to keep things simple for most of our presentations in this uh, series, we'll actually use console applications. So um, let's create one of those. Um, I actually selected .NET 4, but you could also use .NET 3.5 or uh, Silverlight, for example. And now we can go to the Solution Explorer and just add a reference here to system.reactive, which will appear in the .NET uh, dialog over here. So if you search for system.reactive, that's actually the main assembly of Reactive. Let's actually sort this list. Here we go. 
So you have System Reactive available. Um, we have it available for a number of platforms. So you will actually see the 2.0 and the 4.0 runtime assemblies here. Because I'm using .NET 4, I will actually use the v4.0 runtime. Um, otherwise, this is the one you would use for .NET 3.5 SP1. So let's actually use this guy. And now that I have this, um, we can take a look at what's inside system.reactive very briefly. We'll talk much more about this, but you will actually find that we have system reactive link, which is all the querying aspects that Les mentioned in the introduction. We also have system reactive concurrency, which is where the schedulers live. And we have the interface, the iObservable and iObserver interfaces, which actually live in the system namespace and already ship in .NET 4 out of the box. That's right, but for platforms where it's not available, it's included in this exactly. assembly. Exactly, yep. And that's for Silverlight as well as .NET 3.5. Yep. Because on Windows Phone, we already have the interface built into the device as well. That's right, in the system observables assembly. Yeah, the system observables assembly in Windows Phone. That's right. So an alternative way to actually get to um, the reactive extensions is by using NuGet. So just to show you how you can find the packages on NuGet, you can just right click Add Service Reference. You can actually download NuGet from NuGet.org. And here you can now search for Rx. There are two ways to find uh, the releases. If you search for Rx dash, you will actually find the stable releases. If you search for Rx underscore experimental, you will actually find the experimental releases of Rx. And so you can download both of those depending on you know what you want to do or whether you want to have support for the stable release. So this is an alternative way to actually get to um, the assemblies. We'll talk about much more of the um, components of Rx going forward. That's right. Okay. Let's try a little Hello World application. Yep. So let's uh, take this away. And uh, mm -hmm. now we already have Rx over here. We added the assembly. And uh, the first thing is we want to be able to use Let's see here. Observable. This is like where all of our extension methods uh, live. Maybe you should boost the font a little bit. Oh, yes, the font. Let's mm -hmm. boost the font. Let's do that. Okay. And you'll see that it actually is in a system reactive link where all of the uh, query operators are. And so we're going to make a little Hello World application here. And we'll just say, um, actually, let's do it this way. So we'll do Hello World to Observable. We'll say X is subscribe. And so the type of X's will be an I observable of characters. That's right. So we've got, yeah, exactly. So we have I observable of characters here. We convert it to a, a sequence. We'll, we'll talk more what this means. And then for each character, we'll pump out to the, to the console. And then we'll just wait for that to complete for continuing. And now we have the result of Hello World. All right. That's the, our first little application we've written together. The challenge for today is just to download and install it, try it out for yourselves, and, uh, and then look at the rest of the videos. Thank you.